What is up everybody and welcome to another edition of Lovely Loners. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Spyderco Nirvana. Um, everybody's seen this knife before. It's super cool and I'm really excited to be able to share it with you guys. So thanks so much to Francisco, my buddy, for sending this along and uh, I'm really appreciative of that. Let's go ahead and line this thing up next to the PM2 and we'll get a good feel here for the overall size. Both of these knives have beautiful uh, non-factory mirror edges. And uh, you can see here that the Nirvana does have some length on the PM2. It is a substantial knife. Um, it is just about the same thickness, uh, although it is slightly more contoured and it is an integral design. PM2 might actually even be slightly thicker. They have similar thickness to their blade stock at the thickest points though the uh, PM2 thins out much sooner towards the front than the Nirvana does. Um, and yeah, so fairly uh, reasonable size comparison. I would just say that the Nirvana has more length on the PM2, but overall, um, they're pretty similar in size otherwise. So let's go ahead and jump into the features and flaws on this knife. The first thing that I want to talk about are the mods uh, from the owner. So uh, talking to Francisco, he did take a scotch Bright pad to the blade, um, he says that it came with uh, like a bead blast sort of acid wash finish uh, that he didn't really like. So um, there is a light scotch bright finish to this blade. I think it looks just fine. Um, and then the edge is not original either. It's a beautiful mirror polish edge. And finally, it does have an aftermarket clip from Rips Garage Tech. That is, of course, I don't know why I had to open the PM2 for this. Uh, that is, of course, the same place that I got my aftermarket PM2 clip from. Definitely check him out for Spyderco clips, and uh, I don't remember if he does other brands as well, but uh, Rips Garage Tech, um, you can follow him on Instagram here, uh, and go check that out if you're looking for an aftermarket clip. Um, all right, cool. So this, uh, this is an integral, and it has some pretty serious tolerances, but uh, this one is off-center. It does not make contact with the edge, but uh, I was a little bit bummed about that. Not something that's super crazy, but like I said uh, in the video on this Tegral, the centering's dead on on this one. Of course, it's a much more expensive knife. Well, I guess not the uh, production version, actually, come to think of it. Um, but yeah, so this one in particular slightly off-center. Who knows? That's probably not true on every single Nirvana. But uh, it's definitely pushing its luck with its close tolerances, and... Excuse me, and uh, I have a great appreciation for any integral knife. Um, it's just incredibly difficult to make, and beyond that, it's even more difficult to uh, perfect. So uh, I'm definitely appreciative of the quality and of the uh, difficulty that it takes to make a high tolerance integral knife. So that's pretty sweet. Um, I do have to say, though, that the ergonomics on this knife don't make a lot of sense. Uh, there's this cutout here that's kind of contoured. Let's see if I can show it to you. So right here, there's this like divot. Um, and it's straight, it's flat like this. But I don't hold a knife straight. You know, I don't hold a knife like this. Like, I can't, I can't even do it. You know, your finger doesn't go straight around like this. It comes in at a curve. So when I'm actually holding the knife, um, I'm right here on the edge of this contour. And it just makes for really, really garbage ergonomics. I don't understand what's going on there. Um, I'm also pushed further away from the knife. I can't really choke up because they've thinned this out to where it's super sharp and pointy. And um, I can't choke up because it gets super thick and fat and like this is super uncomfortable and now neither of my fingers are actually in this recess. They're both on the edge. Um, and then I'm being poked up here and it's just garbage. Um, and of course, if I choke down on the knife again, I'm, I'm right back here where I'm I can feel this and it just feels uncomfortable and nasty and uh, I really don't understand what the design decision was there, why they didn't make this uh, at an angle or why they didn't just not have a recess at all and let me grab a flat surface. Um, it Overall, the knife has fantastic ergonomics except for this area and it really bums me out. I really, it's a big negative impact on the overall feeling of the knife in your hand. I 
do not understand the decision that was made here. Um, if somebody can point something out to me, uh, then I would appreciate that, but uh, maybe it's just my hand in particular and it works better for bigger hands, um, but uh, I really don't like the way that this knife, I really have to like fit, fidget with it to find that perfect area where I can get my finger just inside this contour. It's not great, not a, not a huge fan. Um, I do like this heel texturing, however. Um, I really like that when I grip the knife, I can kind of feel this in the heel over here. Um, and it gives me confidence. It gives me confidence to pierce. Um, and it gives me uh, just confidence when um, like I'm opening the knife, I'm holding it like this, and I'm going to roll it out. That's uh, pretty good. So I definitely like the texturing down there. And then the jimping up here does a fairly good job as well. Um, it could be a little less kind of smooth or easy to run over, but if you do dig into it, it does provide good support. Um, so it's good, but it could be better. Uh, now let's discuss all of the fun ways that you can open this knife. So the first thing is that you can use your thumb in the spidey hole and you can roll it out, right? Makes sense, that's great. Then of course you can thumb flick it um, with a little bit of a, you can either use the meat of your thumb with a little bit of a wrist flick and that gets the knife out which is fine. You can stick your nail in there and just straight up flick it. I'm having some trouble with that right now. Um, and then of course you can even Gavco flick it. Although it's a little difficult with the spidey hole. You have to make sure that your nail exits the hole at the right time. You can see it's pretty easy to get too far in there and then you just get caught. Um, so you really gotta like leap out of the hole to make that work. But it is manageable once you've figured it out and it's super fun. So those are all great ways to open the knife. However, another way that I can open this knife is like this. Yeah, did you see that? Let's try that again. I'm not shaking it hard, okay? It's horizontal. My, uh, you guys can't see, but my elbow is resting on the armrest of my chair. So I'm, this is only wrist, this is all wrist. My whole arm is not moving. It's My elbow is connected to the armrest of a chair, and that's just wrist flick. I think that that is bullshit. Um, I, <sighs> a detent should not be so light that a knife can just fall out like that. Um, I, I'm super disappointed in the fact that this knife is so easy to accidentally deploy. Now, I understand if I take a flipper and I stand up and I do this with it, I'm gonna, I, I don't wanna bang this blade in anything, so I'm gonna hold the blade, but if I stand up and I get my hand out of the way of the blade and I do this, right? Like with my whole arm and with as much force as I possibly can and the knife deploys, that's super normal, right? Like I would say probably 60 to 70% of frame lock flippers like will will do that if you really try like super aggressive with your whole arm that said i've never ever come across a knife where i just accidentally open the knife by like basically moving it like i could s turn really fast and turn back and i feel like i would o <laughs> i didn't even, like look i'm not i'm not i'm just like i shouldn't be able to just open the knife by just lightly flicking it. I think that's obnoxious. I think it's dangerous. Um, in fact, the way that I discovered that the knife opens that easily um, was by accident. I literally just moved my hand too fast and it flew open and I almost dropped it and like sliced my leg open. Like it is so not okay. So inappropriate. I do not understand. I hope I don't know if it's just this one. Um, the scary part about doing reviews and the really hard part about doing reviews, especially with production knives, is that you're only testing one out of 20,000 that are out there, right? So it's completely unfair to make a hardcore judgment about a knife having only tried one example. But I would love to hear in the comments down below from other Nirvana open owners um, if your knife opens that easily because it's a safety concern. Like I... I'm like genuinely concerned about carrying this knife with me. I don't, I mean, you know, if I pull it out of my pocket too fast and, or like if I go to hand it to somebody, like, I mean, I literally, I would literally hand somebody a knife like this, like, Hey, like 
it, you know, and it just comes flying out, flying out. It doesn't even, I'd understand if it just broke a little bit, you know, and got here and I'd be like, oh, that's not, that's kind of scary. But no, it completely, I, the whole, I mean, it's full on deployment and I don't know, I'm, I'm done talking about it. You guys have seen it for yourselves. I don't want to dwell too much on it, but I think, I think it's pathetic. I think it's unsafe. Um, and I'm just really, really unhappy about that. So, um, kind of going back to the positives about the knife, I will say this thing absolutely drops like a dream. Check this out. It's just super smooth. It isn't that same kind of um, like uh, free fall as like a Thorburn, right? It's not quite like that, but it doesn't need to be. I actually prefer this, or sorry, I, I appreciate this for different reasons than I appreciate a Thorburn. I like that it doesn't completely free fall, but it is incredibly smooth. Um, you can see even the slightest movements cause uh, the blade to move, and I just... I don't know, there's something about the smoothness of this that even though I have to shake it a little bit, um, it's just fun. It's fun to to help it drop close. It's fun to do this, what I'm doing right now on camera. Uh, it's enjoyable, I really like it. I like how smooth the knife is, I really appreciate it. Um, next up, I will talk about the pattern here. I really like it. I like that you can kind of feel it with your nail. I like that it's really shiny in the pattern, and then it's got this really heavy tumbled bead blasted finish um, on the on the flat areas. I just think it's overall a very tasteful design. I like that it kind of carries over through the integral structure of the knife. Um, I think that's a really fun way to accent the fact that it's an integral knife. Um, and even though that's a matter of personal opinion, I really appreciate the overall um, design and just kind of aesthetics of the knife. I think it's very beautiful. Um, I think they did a very good job. Now I will say with the blade, I can understand why people get the regrind. Um, I'm unfamiliar with what it's actually called. I haven't interacted with it in a couple months, um, but I'm pretty sure most of you know what I'm talking about. There's a pretty popular regrind out there for the Nirvana where the whole knife will get redone in one long flat grind, and I can definitely see why people do that because this blade stock is super thick, and they don't actually start the flat grind bevel until you're halfway down the thickness, so it actually makes for an ultra, ultra thick um, bevel behind the edge, and it makes this knife a much worse slicer than I think the side profile would make you feel that it is. It's got a really nice big belly. Um, it's a really good drop point shape. I well, this is actually not a not a drop point, but um, it's just got a really good shape overall. And you would think it would make a great slicer. Um, and because they have these contoured edges up here in the swedge, um, it makes it look, when you look like this, for, that it's not that bad, but really this is super thick. The best way to tell is by looking at the uh, at the spidey hole, how thick it is right here in the center, and they really don't give themselves a lot of room to come up in the bevel. So definitely under, understand the uh, reasoning behind the regrind there, and I was gonna, I would say, excuse me, that if you're going to get a Nirvana... I would recommend having that uh, regrind planned for pretty immediate, um, getting that done pretty immediately. Um, so that's it for this one, guys. This knife was really ruined for me when I figured out it could be so easily misdeployed. Um, maybe that's not as big of a deal to you guys. I'm sure there's a few people watching this video rolling their eyes saying, "I, you know, get over it, bro. But um, for me, compared, again, just when you have so much to choose from on the market, um, it's really worthwhile, I think, to go after the best thing that you can at any given price point. And this knife is just a total safety concern for me. I would not want to bring this to work. I would never want to hand this to somebody that's not familiar with knives. I would never want to pull this out of my pocket too fast. Um, it scares the crap out of me. So um, that's it, guys. I, I really don't appreciate how easy it is. I mean, look, it... Uh, you know, I don't know, force doesn't come through very well on camera. It's really hard to tell how much force somebody's actually applying to something. But, I mean, I'm really, I'm just, I'm just, all I'm doing is shaking my wrist a little bit. I mean, I'm just like lazy, lazy shaking my wrist. No, there's, there's no, there's no force happening there. I'm just doing a little bit of a wag and it comes flying out without warning. So, um, that really killed it for me. I'm over it. Um, but thanks so much for watching, guys. If you would like to send me a knife for lovely loners, you can be awesome and do so by emailing me at tovarishworks at gmail.com. Uh, if you'd like to see some beautiful pictures of all these wonderful knives, you can follow me on Instagram at tovarishworks. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.